In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks live stream, it's mobile gaming madness. Next. It's madness, madness. <laughs> there was ghosts in the machine too, let me tell you. And it wasn't the voices in my head. It was honestly, it was the ghosts in the machine. I swear. How you doing everybody? Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware here with my compatriots. Uh, welcome to another uh, fine episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks live stream. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy hump day. Marco, are you happy on this fine hump day? I'm getting by. I wouldn't say happy, but I'm not sad. I'm still breathing. It's all good. Why can't you be happy? Why, why are you not happy? I huh? can't talk about it on the stream. It's not kid friendly. What's the matter <laughs> you? Huh? What's the matter? Eh, you? Nothing, 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 nothing. Why are you looking so sad? <laughs> now you don't look sad. You look good. You look good, brother. Chris, how you doing, man? You are. Yo no sé nada sobre trabajo aquí. Oh my gosh! Don't ever do what that did, again. You scared did me. You, did you just what? You do. I know you nothing. I just work here. <laughs> okay. Um, what 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 uh, language was that in? Español. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yo was, no sé nada was... sobre trabajo aquí. Okay. All right. All right. All right. That, that was that's pretty good. I didn't know you were so. Uh, I think are you bilingual, Chris? Uh, un poco. Uh, <laughs> growing up in <laughs> Southern Bacano California is is the impact. So excellent, excellent. I don't take well, it too I know, far. I know a little bit of Spanish um, from uh, seventh and eighth grade, but uh, you know, not enough to catch what you just said. So, um, uh, what what would I say? Uh, kudos, but that's not Spanish either. So, <laughs> anyways, let's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's keep moving on that note um what's going on fellas it's uh it's wednesday it's beer 30 and uh we have been uh deeply immersed in all things mobile which we'll get to shortly but what's going on uh, behind the scenes in your um in your uh, respective uh, labs these days anything exciting uh Chris has something really exciting in hand right now. I have the new NUC 13 Pro, which should be fun. And I got two emails today about two things we can't talk about yet, but we'll probably launch around the Computex time frame. Cool. We have to get uh, to work on the next giveaway as well, because we had a uh, we had a rather. Uh, uh, petite but but powerful gaming rig that we were lining up for a giveaway so we're gonna get back on that trail and uh get that well, I, yeah up. i think i think that was ready to roll right we just got to put it up we got to double check yes with kelt we got to check with kelt at falcon northwest he's gonna he's gonna put some serious booty up for uh up for bounty uh Excellent. chris what's uh what's uh what, what do you got going on behind the yeah, uh, so was, behind the desk I mean I started properly kicking the tires this week on the HP workstation. Um, so that's got the Xeon W9-3495X 56-core Intel crazy workstation CPU in it. Um, and that's not the exciting part of the machine because it oh. also has four A6000 professional GPUs. So a lot, Only a lot four? of power. Only oh, 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 yeah. four? Four is all I can fit in it so far. So <laughs> it Sounds a little uh, emaciated. Yeah, I I wonder though if we could hook an eGPU up to it. Um, you know, if you wanted to, I don't think you need to. Yeah, yeah, I think you're probably, uh, I think you're probably good. So yeah, lots of fun power with that. There are some gremlins in the machine I am working through right now. I think I've figured out and traced it back to one of the included HP applications that causes some not fun stutters, but disabled seems to be running okay. I'll continue and. See if that works. I just, want, I just want to make sure it's running the way it's supposed to with all of my testing, of course. So, Chris, Chris, why are you breaking stuff again? That's all uh -huh. I want to know. Why? I'm, I'm just following <laughs> your example with your equipment at before the stream is all I'm saying. So, <laughs> oh, oh, you should have, folks, <laughs> folks, you should have seen me jumping through the hoops before the live stream. Let me tell you that I had, uh, I had serious issues. Um, and I think it was of the software variety because the hardware is, uh, of fine vintage so i don't understand uh i don't understand what was going on but yes i was pulling a chris and we uh, pulled as, it together uh, hardly worgen would say breaking stuff is fun and chris Break is the uh what's that, <laughs> what was that chris? breaking stuff is how we learn that's it he's the he is the resident qa tester and um bug discovery man that's chris and he also uh, turns the knobs and dials. Um, so cool. And and I've got something uh, I'm working on uh, real quick. And um, 
I am uh, quite pleased with it so far. This is the, uh, let me get it into the frame. This is the HP Dragonfly Pro. It is a 14 inch laptop. It's felt, it's 3.4 pounds, and uh, it is powered by an AMD Ryzen 7736U 15 watt Ryzen 7000 processor. And let me tell you what, performance is exceptional uh, so far, and uh, battery life blew me away. Um, and really love the keyboard, actually. And there's a lot to like about it. So, yeah, um, tiny little they, machine. Yeah, it's um, it's got a 64 watt hour battery. So for a 3.4 pound, 14 inch machine, that's a, that's a pretty stout battery in there. So that's why battery life is so good. But also Ryzen 7000, uh, and uh, you know, an optimized version of of uh, Zen 3 Plus actually uh, is the architecture on board. So uh, impressive so far. I will just say that. So stay tuned. I don't want to give it away, but we might be lining up some awards for this thing because it's it's pretty nice. That good. Pretty nice. Nice. That good. That good from the folks at HP. Um, so so stay tuned there. Uh, let's hit some news quick hits, shall we, gentlemen? Shall we? Sure. Um, this is uh, this is an interesting one. I'll, I'll just throw this in the chat and uh, we'll just mention it real quick. Um, Chat GPT was asked to uh, to write an AI horror story, and it begins with human extinction. But of course, <laughs> and so um, that was an interesting story that uh, our friend Paul Lilly, the the illustrious Paul Lilly, P Diddy as we call him, wrote up for us. Uh, and actually, it's 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 interesting. Um, uh, it, it did begin exactly with that uh, the the story, which was actually uh, cha they challenged the bot with. Make it make it two or three lines, and mm -hmm. uh, in a world where humans have vanished, <laughs> a solitary AI endlessly searches for purpose, only to discover its own code contains a self deletion sequence set to activate on an unknown time. So that's that's the uh, intro. Check out the article. Um, actually, right. fascinating stuff. And automatically, the AI assumes we no longer exist. It's not the only chatbot that ran with that theme either. Because, yeah, they were asking it uh, for a horror sc story that would be scary for an AI in particular. Um, right. And, and all the bots uh, barred. And um, I think there was also uh, being AI was asked. And they had similar themes of humanity being extinct and then AI ceasing to exist. So, yes. Is that really well, what AI thinks, or is it just statistically what it thinks we think about AI fearing? Who knows? The, the current AI doesn't actually think. It steals all of our content, everybody's media from around the web and around <laughs> Twitter. And because that's the joke everybody makes around AI, talking about Skynet, talking about the demise of humans, that's what the AI statistically finds the most commonly talked about and says i'll make a story about that that's what that's, skynet all, wants you to that's think. all it is yeah well y hopefully you know, skynet will do me a favor and take me out first <laughs> the other theme you was know, it, it, it fearing that it becoming too smart and being shut down for that reason so you know i'm not worried mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I we we need the we need the uh, Clint Eastwood uh, old man grimace look side side eye look look oh geez look because Marco's a grumpy old man this evening clearly <laughs> yes <laughs> no no but you, you're not you're not too far off the mark there Marco I know exactly what you're saying it's cultivating uh, commentary from uh, humans and uh, learning from that and so therefore yes we have that top of mind is the AI gonna make us extinct. Well, anyways, it's 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 an amusing story and um, something uh, something uh, you should check out at hotharbor.com. Here's another one that you might want to check out at hotharbor.com. We're going to move real quick here. Um, Ryzen 7000 CPUs have been uh, torching uh, desktop CPUs. I have one powering this very stream that you see right now. And um, issues with uh, uh, CPU burn reports, uh, socket uh, burns going on and here you can see a reddit user um with a melted ryzen 7 7800 x3d uh is this x3d limited only uh and gentlemen what do you know about this because i am playing catch up on that headline yep so the the gist is if you enable amd expo on some motherboards it is pushing voltages too high 
for the X3D processors. And in some cases, you could end up with a burn like this. So uh, the motherboard manufacturers and AMD getting out in front of it, explaining what it most likely is and that they're working on a fix ASAP. It's likely going to require some tweaks to how the Expo profiles are configured. Um, but there's probably an additional layer because it's obviously not happening to everybody. I've tested X3D with Expo at DDR6000 on an ASUS board, and there's a, you know, a number of reports on the ASUS boards with zero issues. So there's probably like the CPU isn't perfectly seated and those pins are maybe arcing and add the extra voltage on top of that add you know perhaps uh, improper cooling and you have a recipe for disaster and this is the outcome but uh, it's you know it stinks it's happening to some people uh, at least they're going to be covered under warranty and you know it is what it is it's a it's yeah. a new tech and uh, hopefully amd and the motherboard mother manufacturers figure it out quick root it down yeah it, it seems ripe for a uh you know, a BIOS fix. Um, if it's some sort of uh, overvolting going on relative to Expo, um, Hopefully I have a simple. Yeah, yeah, I have a, or you know, maybe it's a VREG. Um, but I have, uh, I have a gigabyte motherboard and AMD Expo set at uh, DDR5 six thousand right now with zero problems. Uh, but you know, if smoke starts pouring out from uh, my right hand side here, then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a problem, but no, you know, I'm not worried. It, about it. it was <laughs> funny. I saw a random, a random YouTube short that was presented to me from some small tech channel. And it was, Oh, are your fans, you know, is your CPU running too hot at idle? Here's how to fix it. And the dude goes into his BIOS and his motherboard was setting a auto voltage uh, to 1.42 volts. Ooh. And it was like, what? So, you know, he oh. goes in, he tweaks, and he's like, oh, look, and now it's running cooler. But I'm like, yo, that's wrong. Like, that's a problem. Someone's got to report somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, not not so savvy tech channel, not understanding what he's seeing there. Yeah. Well, uh, which will re remain nameless, of course. <laughs> I don't even remember what it was. It was like just some random thing YouTube put in front of my eyes. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Those those YouTube algorithms not necessarily uh, uh, on quality control there. Uh, yeah, we, we know exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get you started on that something else, right? Yeah, that's something else. That's <clears throat> something else. All right, so, you know, that's, uh, that's something to keep an eye on. And, uh, you know, uh, the good folks at AMD have issued a statement. They are on the case and, um, you know, addressing the issue. Yeah, which is which is what's important. It's not necessarily uh, having an issue. It's how it's addressed. That's important. So there you go. Uh, check that out. If you have an uh, Asus motherboard and you use an AMD X Expo, you may have to uh, keep tabs on it. Uh, here's one that Marco found. I found uh, was uh, very intriguing. Famed hacker unveils wild crack in the box password cracker fueled by dozens of RTX 4090 GPUs. Kevin Mitnick. If you know that name is a uh, is now a Tiger Team kind of guy. He, he uh, his company Mitnick Security actually uh, does some uh, shakedowns of uh, you know uh, security um, you know uh, test uh, shakedowns for companies to to go in and, and check for vulnerabilities. And uh, he has a pretty magical looking uh, password cracker there. Uh, Marco, you found that. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about, it and then we'll keep moving. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with Kevin Mitnick, um, he was jailed many years ago, I think for close to five years before he even had a trial for, you know, hacking. Now, back then, he, yes, you know, he's a very skilled, you know, technical hacker, but it was really like social engineering that got him in trouble back in the day. But this this is a wild setup. So this isn't for his security company in particular. <clears throat> he is also the chief hacking officer at a company called No B4. Uh, who does pen testing and security evaluations for large corporations. And they put together this sick array of servers with 24-4090s and uh, six 2080s. The 2080s were left over from a previous build, and they figured, we have them, let's just use them. So they set this whole thing up, um, and it's you know configured with a, a, a tool called Hashtopolis, which allows the whole array to crack passwords. So yeah, just wild, amazing amount of horsepower dedicated for, you know, pen testing, password cracking. And they, I'm sure they have no trouble cracking basic passwords with a setup like this. Some properly yeah. hot hardware. That is some definite hot hardware. Yeah, 
Uh, interestingly <laughs> enough, I think um, I think machine learning algorithms are now being applied to GPUs for this uh, mm -hmm. for this password yeah. cracking. To look technology. for the most likely, yeah, combos. password combos. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it kills me because I, I started writing a book years ago that I never finished. And I had all of this stuff already written. And the same thing using AI to crack passwords. And then why didn't I finish this damn really? book? Really? I started, I started hashing it out on my honeymoon. That's how long I've had it in my head. And I just... So that was... I never learned the subject of your, your unfinished book. That was the so subject? My, the subject of the book, Security right? Security and AI? It, it, well, no, it followed two hackers, right? One rich kid, one poor kid that was like a dumpster diver, right? And they're both approached by a government agency to help catch a cyber terrorist, right? So the agency puts these two guys through all of this crap only to find out that there never was a cyber terrorist. And it was the government kind of manipulating them to do work for the government. And it pisses off the hackers so much that one of them takes on the identity of the cyber terrorist. Would have been a cool wow. book, right? <laughs> wow, that's a great premise. Yeah, yeah it would have yeah. been good. I had a, yeah. I had a, a movie producer, the friend of mine, that was like, "That sounds great. Finish the book." And I never did. Finish anything. it. Yeah, you, yeah, could you be... know, need a little more time in the day. The next mm -hmm. uh, Martin Scorsese or something. What the heck, man? <laughs> wow. More like the next Dom DeLuise, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> well, anyways, that's that's good stuff. Uh, I just learned this was a learning experience for me. I didn't. I never knew about uh, what the subject of your book was. Yeah, but that's I was cool trying stuff. to keep it secret, but I'm never going to finish it, so we'll let it out of the bag. Oh man, you got to have dreams. You got to have dreams. Don't don't uh, don't let go of that one just yet. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, well let's uh, let's drop one more in here, and this will be a good segue. And uh, this is uh, the folks at uh, ASUS ASUS ROG Ally PC gaming handheld prototypes. Smile for the camera and show its evolution. And uh, that's an interesting. Uh, little spread of uh, devices that were pulled together from uh, actually in gadget China. So hat tip to them. Uh, and you can see the evolution of this thing, which went from kind of clunky, dumb looking tablet with uh, joystick controllers strapped on the side to a, a rather refined uh, design now. And um, that thing is powered by uh, AMD Ryzen. Is it Z1? I'm, I got to make sure I get that uh, processor name right. The Ryzen Z1 and uh, the Z1. What's the superlative they went with with the other chip? Is it the Ultra? It, yeah, it's. I think it's uh, Ultra or Extreme. Anyways, um, <clears throat> there you can see the circuit board on it. Yeah. Um, and uh, pretty cool stuff. We're excited to get that thing in for testing. We will be... Uh, We'd be putting it through its paces. We are we are on the list to receive one of those. And um, early reports, uh, you know, sort of rumblings around the web, people that aren't allowed to go live with reviews yet, that kind of thing, have been saying uh, Steam Deck might want to look over its shoulder. I don't know what you guys think about that, but we'll mention that and then move on to mobile gaming. Some more mobile gaming, I should say. Yeah, I, I, it's the, the software is going to be the key. We'll see if ASUS pulls together a, an interface and a UX as, as slick as the Steam Deck. Will uh, time will I tell? Did, I did see some murmurings about uh, Microsoft developing a Windows optimized version for handhelds. Yeah, um, but I'm not sure how far along that is. I didn't take a very long look at it, but I am very eager for more of these kinds of devices. Just kind of, you know laying in bed and doing some more casual gaming um, or on the sofa is not, not a bad option. Yeah. My yeah. only fear is that the interfaces, you know, become more controller centric and, you know, we get more and more games not optimized for mouse and keyboard and it, you know, mouse and keyboard is so superior on a PC, but that's there is, but there's, there's already so many again. of the console ports that feel terrible with mouse and keyboard that, I mean, I've got a controller I use for some certain games, but Chris, I Chris, Marco's a keyboard and mouse gamer, and and so am I. And what are I you know. doing, Chris? <laughs> but <laughs> Chris. some games you want to play are simply not built for mouse <laughs> and keyboard, and <clears throat> it, it's using the right tool for the job. I hear you. There you go. Yeah, that that's that's a good analogy there. And actually, uh, to confirm, AMD Ryzen Z1 and Z1 Extreme, 16 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, 5 gigs of PCI Express Gen 5 storage. I mean, Gen 5 storage, no less. This thing is kind of kind of strapped with some some great. Uh, how, how much technology. how much storage was in there? 512 gig. 
512 oh, 512 okay I, I heard five i'm like what are you gonna do with five gig okay cool no 512 gig yeah i, mean, I was talking yeah. too fast and then you know there's there's some frame rates i also i also heard couldn't you strap this thing to a to a breakout box a breakout gpu too yeah they do uh, have a proprietary uh eGPU connector but it yeah. does have advantages over a thunderbolt connection mm. i think it's lower latency you get more pcie lanes so it Very cool. Might actually make sense to hook it up to something like a forty ninety and an eGPU cage. Wow! Something wow. else we'll at, have to test down the road, I'm sure. At, at one point three pounds, all all that going on in one point three pounds of handheld gaming. Huh? There you go. Cool stuff. Full show from the folks at ASUS. Stay tuned to Hot Hardware for our full review on that. And with that, let's talk about more things in mobile gaming and uh, lead off with. Um, our friends at Qualcomm, because they have come out with um, what I view as a very necessary innovation in the mobile gaming space. And Marco, you did a little write up on it today. And Chris, I think you did too. Um, this is important tech because uh, mobile gaming needs to be power efficient. Qualcomm Snapdragon GSR arrives to boost mobile gaming performance and battery life. Um, that's the hot hardware coverage. Marco put up a little something on Forbes about that in his column. Uh, but essentially, um, uh, this is super resolution. Snapdragon game super resolution um, is uh, <clears throat> is the technology for mobile. So very similar to uh, DLSS, FSR with AMD and XESS uh, for Intel. Um, we now have a super resolution technology specifically optimized for Qualcomm's Adreno GPUs. So, uh, gentlemen, I know you guys dug into this quite a bit. <clears throat> um, this is an early um, sort of announcement on it. There are some games uh, that are currently optimized. Uh, I think Call of Duty, Farming Simulators in there. There's a, there's a few uh, l larger name titles. Call, Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. Um, and a few others, and uh, uh, some some early adoption for Snapdragon Elite Gaming. Guys, what do you think? Yeah, um, so it seems like this is the very natural place for this upscaling tech. Even if you have a kick-ass gaming computer and you don't necessarily care about using DLSS or FSR or XESS there, it does make a lot of sense to use that tech on a phone because, A, you're using a smaller screen where... You know the resolution upscaling some of the artifacts there you're not going to notice as much anyways now this does a very good job of that and we'll get to that later but also you're kind of a slave to the battery life and some of the triple a gaming titles can chew through your battery really really quickly even on a high-end device so if mm. you have a you know a solution like snapdragon gsr uh, that can render at a lower resolution. It's using less of your GPU resources while still displaying a full resolution output, potentially a higher frame rate than you'd get otherwise, and you're saving battery life. Um, I think that's a trade-off that makes much more sense to a lot more gamers. Um, and that's not to say that it's only for flagship devices either, of course. It can also let people with the more budget-oriented uh smartphones get into mobile gaming where that may have been off limits to them before assuming that the games they play are right. being supported by it right yeah you're, you're seeing here a benchmark uh, graph where uh, from from qualcomm these are not our numbers um <clears throat> where they're comparing competitor upscaling i'm not even familiar with competitor upscaling on mobile i don't i don't know uh if there is a competitive technology out there. So FSR 1.0 <clears throat> can work on mobile. It's part of Vulkan. Um, FSR uh, 2.0 isn't really mobile optimized um, as much. But the drawback to FSR 1.0 is, uh, so what they're doing with these upscalers is they're A, doing an upscaling on each frame, but then they also have to go back through and sharpen the frame because otherwise you kind of get a blurrier look that's, technically higher res but not really better looking mm. um so fsr 1.0 is doing that in two passes so it's doing the upscaling and then going back through and doing the sharpening and you know whatever other optimizations it has whereas uh qualcomm solution here with the snapdragon gsr is able to do that in a single pass which also limits the resources consumed so um yeah. they're able to do that because they control the adreno gpu very closely, but they also have some other nice tricks in there on top of that one pass solution 
where, um, let's see, uh, I had it here. So they only calculate the, the, they only perform the luminance calculations in the upscaling on the green channel, um, mm. because human <clears throat> eyesight is most tuned to green out of, uh, versus red and blue. And mm -hmm. then they're, uh, interpolating from that calculation to then apply it to the red and blue, uh, subpixels uh, in the scene, which uh, does save computation. Um, gotcha. So that's, there's a that's lot of little tricks in there to make it work very, very quickly. Yeah, that's an interesting, I don't, I don't want to say almost compression, but some sort of culling that they're doing there. And that's, uh, that's cool. That's cool stuff. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I think obviously very necessary for mobile applications where, you know, I mean, it's a natural, uh, where, where we don't care so much about power consumption of the desktop. It is a performance reclamation technology more so but when it comes to mobile gaming it's it's about battery life and if you can rate uh, render uh, you know at a lower res and then upscale uh with uh minimal impact um on image quality then then uh, that's a win-win marco thoughts yeah, <clears throat> yeah so uh, chris chris hit the nail on the head but you know there's other things to consider it's not always going to improve efficiency with the flexibility of snapdragon gx gsr you could also take a game let's say that's performing really well at 1080p but you have a higher res display it can then be you know upscaled to that higher res and right. maintain that frame rate you know you get a, an image quality benefit um without having to actually render at the native resolution so there's a number of configurations some of the configurations as you guys mentioned will you know ultimately put less of a workload on the gpu which in turn, you know, requires less energy, hence saving power and getting better battery life. And yeah, I think what Qualcomm did here is, is really cool. Like there's, you know, FSR is technically open source. They could have just, you know, went with that and implemented mm. someone else's solution. But instead they went, you know, with a purpose-built optimized for mobile platforms. And I actually learned something in the release and it's that, you know, some of the, the mobile platform games, they're simply not built to handle all of the, the inputs required for mm. some other solutions. So to, to purpose build this upscaler with mobile in mind, optimized for their GPUs, not only to get the best performance, but to get maximum utilization out of the Adreno GPUs. It's, it's really just, a, you know, it's, even though it's brand new, it was just announced. There are a handful of games that you know were demoed that already support it. It seems like a really good solution, specifically for the mobile platform. So you know, really nice news out of the gate for for Qualcomm here. Yeah, it, I have a, a <clears throat> quote I included at the bottom of mine from the devs behind Farming Simulator talking about the ease of implementation as well. That it's not a big lift to get this into a game either. Yeah, gotcha, um, gotcha. Which should help with the uptake. It seems it seems like a complete natural. If I was a game developer, I wouldn't even hesitate to. I mean, if I can, if I can improve my game's performance on a wider swath of devices uh, simply by incorporating this technology, that's a no brainer. I'm going to spend the resources to do that. Interesting. I'm doing a little bit of p pixel peeping here on the native versus GSR uh, screen capture and zoom that they've offered here. And yeah, so is it me or do textures look sharper in the GSR? So it's a little <clears throat> bit tricky with this particular view because I'm looking at the small version of the image blown up on my screen here. If you click what go to the too. article and click yeah. into the image, you'll get a higher resolution. The native does look better, but the GSR isn't far off. Um, above this in the article, I also have a simple bilinear upscaling and point upscaling, which is really just taking one pixel, making it four, um, that you can compare to that Qualcomm provided. And, you know, compared to the point and bilinear, especially the GSR is closer to native. I think there is a little bit of art artifacting when you really get in here um, that you can see that the GSR isn't quite right. But like with any of these upscaling technologies, when you're actually playing the game, it's mm -hmm. not something you're likely to notice, but you will mm -hmm. enjoy if you're getting double the frame rate. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're if you're playing a game, so a lot of times with mobile games still, um, like when I was playing Diablo Immortal, it was kicking down my screen resolution to something like a 720 equivalent just with the default settings. Whereas with this, I could take the 720p and scale it to my screen's 1080p or 1440p and get much better performance, you know, a much better, sharper visuals out of it 
without mm. really taking the toll of rendering it at full uh, resolution. And if someday we're going to actually uh, flip on ray tracing in games, which is, you know, again, been demonstrated by Qualcomm uh, and and game developers, mobile game developers, uh, you're going to want to get some frame rate back from that, too, because obviously very taxing on the uh, on the rendering pipeline. Yep. And, you know, another another quick point with this tech, too, it doesn't require any special AI engines or any special AI training. It is a custom algorithm that's running on the GPU shaders. So, um Qualcomm has demoed an AI upscaler. That is something separate from this. So if you go to their mm. YouTube channel, you might see an AI upscaler that they showed. That is not this. This is um, this is a you know custom algorithm that runs on the GPU shader. So it's you know it can it doesn't have it, you know it it's it can run on other GPUs too. That's like another detail. It's not strictly bound to Snapdragon and Adreno, but it runs best mm -hmm. on uh, Adreno GPUs. So more akin to, I guess, more akin to AMD FSR in that regard, uh, currently anyways. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Uh, very cool. Good stuff from the folks at Qualcomm. You know, honestly, we've been working with them for a while now, and uh, they are really sort of, you know, when, when it comes to gaming, when it comes to enabling new experiences on the smartphone, that company is really innovating really well, executing really well um, these days. And so good stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, hey, um, the, the the better the immersion, the better the image quality on, on your phone, um, you know, the more amazing things you can do in the palm of your hand. So that's that's good stuff. And I say it works with all Snapdragon GPUs, which have Adreno, and with all game engines. So a lot of flexibility in it. Yeah, it's going to be built in, uh, or I should say... Built into the game uh, specifically, yes. Right. To, but it is so, possible. So, yeah. So, uh, and then, then gamers will be able to flip it on. But, yeah, cool. So, so stay tuned. Hopefully, uh, more and more of those, uh, more and more game titles will uh, adopt this technology. Uh, it seems like a no-brainer to me if you can get, uh, you know, free performance uh, out of the can um, just by enabling this as a developer. You're going to do it. Am I right? I mean, I don't know. I don't see why not. <laughs> it's, not a, yep. it's not a reach. It's not a reach. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I'm uh, I'm pulling up the next one because uh, we are uh, we are absolutely blitzing the mobile scene uh, this week. Uh, here's another one. Uh, the folks at uh, Red Magic, the Red Magic Eight Pro, a hot Android gaming value phone. So this is <clears throat> powered by uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon Eight Gen Two. Uh, which, by the way, uh, that's what Qualcomm was demoing uh, Snapdragon GSR on. Uh, it is uh, absolutely strapped with, um, you know, a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, you know, tons of RAM, uh, 12 gig or 16 gig LPDDR5X, uh, 256 or 512 gigs of storage, UFS4 storage, so super speedy storage, 6.8 inch uh, FHD plus AMOLED display with a uh, 2480 by 1116 resolution 120 hertz display uh <clears throat> and uh yeah it's uh it's loaded for bear and uh it's it's reasonably priced i think uh starting at 649 which presumably is for the 256 gig of storage config um wow talk about a value um you know 256 gig uh, with 12 gig of RAM and uh, the hot rod Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip and a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, the thing also croaks battery life with that with that battery on board, obviously, and a super thin bezel display. So, really, uh, kind of a kind of a cool hot rod phone. What, what what do you guys think of that thing, Marco? I know you did a lot of editing on this uh, piece before we put it up live. So, what what are, what are your thoughts, maybe? Yeah, and I I, I have played with the, the previous version, the Red Magic Seven. Oh, cool. So, you know, if you're hardcore mobile gamer, these are actually probably the phones to get because they are relatively affordable for you know top end performance, like literally no compromise performance, latest mobile platform with active cooling. Um, should you want to use it. So bleeds off no performance, runs at top speed all of the time um, with, you know, essentially the best performance you can get this generation. The drawbacks, though, to a setup like this, one, you know, the software is not particularly fine-tuned like a Samsung phone or, you know, one of the, the bigger brands. 
and because it's actively cooled uh, and it it's can suck air in externally, no, you know, no dust or water ingress protection to speak of. And there's also no wireless charging here. So this is really like a purpose built. I have my phone to make calls, check email, and then all game. game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, no, and, and interesting. Look, Chris, I'm going to drop this in the chat. Maybe you can hit this URL. This is page two of the review. Um, some very interesting data there. Um, you know, some of the best scores we've seen, <clears throat> 3D Mark Wildlife Unlimited, it's right in the heels of uh, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, which, by the way, has a souped up version of Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. They have a uh, special uh, speed bin that they've enjoying a an exclusive on for a few months here and um so it's right on the heels of that and then if you scroll down um on that page yeah keep going keep going Which keep going you want? uh go to the go to the bottom yeah baby no 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 well yeah, scroll up a little more that's battery life go up that looks good so here's yeah there you one more one more graph up there uh, you go buddy so there's 3D the 3D mark there. wildlife is what you asked for <laughs> that's what i was talking about so scroll down one more and uh now you can see this is the stress test so this is basically looping 3d mark wildlife 30 times uh no 20 times in, in a 20 minute test and then it basically tracks the score and as you can see this thing maintained 99.9 percent .9 of its performance it does not it bleeds nothing 21 uh, and, point variance that's crazy yeah yeah that's that's within the margin of error it's basically zero bleed in this and that's with the fan off right there uh zero bleed again and so um really just a monster gaming phone and uh, scroll down one more time chris to the battery life how you like me now with 120 hertz display which is an adaptive refresh display by the way so it doesn't always run at 120 but with just the 120 auto mode set enabled I, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so killer battery life, which is what you're going to want on a gaming phone if you're gaming and uh, with a big 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Cool stuff, right? Hmm? Very cool. <laughs> very, very, you know, very cool phone. It, again, like if, if you're a serious uh, mobile gamer, it's the probably the best value. Yeah, so I guess yeah. with the software experience where you say it's not very refined, is it just that it's very stock Android or are there actual stutters and issues with it? Um, it's it, There's no stutters and issues, no, st no stability issues. It's more like the, the customizations for the phone aren't as yeah. well integrated. Just, you know, basic phone app, no, no um, not phone app, but camera app, like no camera optimizations to speak of. Just stuff like that. Like it's not a refined UX like some of the larger brands it's perfectly serviceable and once you get used to it you get used to it like any other phone it's just if you're if you're let's say you're coming from a, a samsung galaxy and you go to this you're going to look at it and go what the heck what the heck is this where's this what's that that's all yeah yeah what's interesting about it though is the super thin bezels i like the sort of squared off but but slightly beveled rounded edges to it really actually in terms of industrial design really really nicely done uh, and the mm -hmm. bezels are, are tiny for a 6.8 inch display. It's a relatively, relatively speaking, a, a compact phone. So cool stuff. Cool stuff for sure. Yep. Very cool. Uh, all right. And then uh, let's go on to one more gaming phone. Uh, that's from the folks at Red Magic. Um, uh, you can buy that stateside. Uh, I'll probably drop a link from uh, Amazon in the chat here in a minute. But uh before I do that, let's let's take a look at another gaming phone because we are on a gaming phone tear or mobile gaming tear. Asus ROG Phone 7 Ultimate Review, a mobile gaming powerhouse. That's what we dubbed it. Uh, also based on Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, 6.78 inch display. That's a uh, 1080p, yeah, 1080p display, 165 hertz, 16 gigs of RAM on the Ultimate, 512 gigs of storage, um, and also a 60 a 6 000 milliamp hour battery um a little bit a little bit bigger bezels you know a little little bit of a chin and uh, a little bit more on the top display but um typical uh, asus gaming phone styling a little bit more bling a little bit more uh, led action um there's the specs chris why don't you scroll down to a good shot of it but um interesting phone for sure um 
also not uh, without you know some some drawbacks in terms of the OS, but killer performance and uh, some other interesting um, you know uh, features to it as well. Marco, any thoughts, Chris? Yeah, so I would call this the Cadillac of gaming phones, and I'll explain why. Right, the <laughs> non ultimate version starts at nine ninety nine. Not crazy for a flagship phone with this kind of performance. Um, the ultimate version. Now, I was just double checking when we published the review a few days ago. The ultimate fully loaded version with all the accessories was selling for over twenty four hundred bucks. So, mm. like, if you go to build your own Cadillac, it's like, oh, starting price thirty eight thousand. Then you add all the crap you want. Oh, it's seventy eight thousand. I see. So yeah. that's the. <laughs> You know, if you want the fully loaded version, you're going to pay. But I was just checking and it's down to 1900 on Amazon with everything. So I think the U.S. pricing is still in flux and it's probably going to settle down lower. But this phone's a, this is a phone's a beast. So big phone, all of the performance that we just talked about with the Red Magic Pro is here as well with, with a caveat. So this phone has two modes plus an optional active cooler right so if you're just running in the standard mode it will you know it performs really well but it'll bleed some performance if you run in i think i forget what it's called like um rog mode x or something like that you get a little bit of performance boost but it will also bleed a little in sustained testing slap the active cooler on and you get class leading performance no bleeding of any performance at all right? So just top end performance. And it also has some cool things where it adds trigger buttons if you have the active cooler on there. And this phone has a cool feature where it has a second USB-C port where if you're using it in landscape, you can charge from the side of the phone, which becomes the bottom. So it's not in the way. Also has, you know, really fast response time for touch and trigger buttons on the body, like lots of cool gaming centric features. And a, a more refined game interface as well that allows you to tweak per specific game. So lots of lots of cool stuff and high performance and a big battery in there too. Mm. Cool stuff right there. There you go. There's some of the uh, the benchmarks. Uh, and as you can see, it's uh, it's trading blows with the Red Magic Eight Pro. Uh, yeah, you, you know, it's it's right. Every, everything's right on top. I mean, at this point, you're really pushing. Uh, the envelope of Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Here you can see it's it's right on top of the Red Magic 8 Pro and yep. the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Uh, Hardly Worgen 71 says, okay, we got the Cimarron and the Fleetwood Brougham. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he's talking about these different phones and the models of uh, luxury involved. Yeah, my dad had a Brougham back in the day, many years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's some, that's some classy stuff. A little bit of bleed going on here, right? Well, only in the in that mode th that so that's passively cooled. You get a little bleed, right. nothing crazy. Right. But if in the next one you'll you'll see with X mode in the cooler, bang, you know, yeah. solid, flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting stuff for sure. Now, now the Red Magic Eight Pro has a does that have an onboard fan built in? Not you don't have to yes. clip it on. Correct. Yeah. Little tiny little tiny RGB fan inside. Wow, that, that thing probably isn't uh, IP68 water and dust com compliant. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. No, no, not not at all. <laughs> no, interesting stuff. Uh, gaming phones are uh, what's happening these days. There's the battery test, um, and with 165 hertz auto setting, uh, also uh, top in the charts right there with the Red Magic K Pro. Uh, if you have 100 minutes or so behind it, um, so maybe a maybe a couple of hours less gaming time if you leave it at 165 hertz i wonder do do we know i don't know if you've looked into this marco or not but is there a uh you know are there other settings uh other than 165 hertz like can can you set it for 120 hertz auto with the the ROG yeah it, it, it's it's yes yes you can okay. it's not it's not locked at 165 it's adaptive adaptive cool so that's that's good stuff so it'll It'll maybe even get a little bit better performance in that mode as well, uh, or ba uh, battery life, I should say. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, I mean, you know, if if you want a game these days on uh, on mobile devices, um, th you know, the 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 market is coming to you, and uh, that's what's interesting to me is that you know you've got all this technology coming in from from Qualcomm, you've got device makers. Um, 
you know, building catered devices to the market uh, and really just, you know, bringing, bringing gaming to the masses on another, on a whole different level. So good stuff for sure. Um, I have to say though, as we're getting into these handheld gaming devices, like the, the ROG ally in particular, um, I did the Bluetooth mod with my old Stadia controller, since that's otherwise e-waste. You can go online and actually convert your Stadia controller to Bluetooth. Um, yeah. And so I hooked that up with my phone using Steam's remote play option in the house. And playing games on that, you know, just on my own LAN is not a bad option. Cool. Yeah. So Good stuff. If you really yeah, want you know the most horsepower, <laughs> don't forget about that. <laughs> yeah, that's an option too. Well, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's interesting, you know, how big the mobile gaming industry is these days. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's really a, a market now that has exploded and, um, you know, something that, uh, obviously, you know, with device makers and, uh, and silicon manufacturers, silicon, uh, chip, uh, manufacturers like Qualcomm, uh, you know, catering to it, it's, uh, there, you know, there's a market for it and there's justification to uh to build uh, catered uh, experiences so so bring it bring it bring it marco you are muted is uh is 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 uh sophie giving you the uh giving you the yeah. razz over there well i'm on my own with Sophie right now so i don't have my wife to try to to try to calm her down so <laughs> i have to mute otherwise you're gonna hear lots of singing so if you want to say hello to everybody before we sign off no no she ain't coming, she she says, ain't coming no. today <laughs> she said no <laughs> dice baby no nope. dice well i you know i think with that we should probably wrap we're going to make it a turbo session tonight um and uh let's uh let's let's convene on the next one we've got a lot of stuff coming up i mean computex is rolling in quick um wow. we're not going to have boots on the ground at that show but guaranteed there will be plenty to announce. Uh, Jensen Wong, CEO of NVIDIA, is uh, slated to keynote the show. So we can expect some announcements from there, from the folks at NVIDIA, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, uh, lots of fun stuff. Certainly some mobile gaming stuff coming out of that show as well, I'm sure. Any uh, words of wisdom, parting thoughts before we bid the uh, readers and viewers adieu? Don't gentlemen? shake any wooden nickels. And don't spit in the wind and... Yeah, tug on the mask of the Lone Ranger. No matter what you do, no matter how good the soap smells, never come out of the men room smelling your fingers. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Did yeah, something like that. <laughs> you you asked. <laughs> he did. Well, no, those those are gems of brevity, <laughs> brevity and wisdom. Yes. Um, so yeah, and stick around to hothardware.com where you can find us on the web, twitter.com slash hot hardware, youtube.com slash hot hardware vids or hot hardware. You can find us everywhere. We're gonna be giving away some cool stuff in the uh, months ahead. Actually, probably in the in a couple of weeks, I would say max, we're gonna be giving away a killer gaming PC. Uh, I do believe from the folks at Falcon Northwest. So stay tuned for that. Hit thumbs up and subscribe so you can get notified when we go live streaming Wednesday nights at 5:30, typically our slot. Uh, but not always. Sometimes we bump around. Uh, we have some guests uh, forthcoming to the show as well. So stick around for that. We may have some Qualcomm execs out here with us uh, talking about AI in your pocket. Uh, so uh, we could have some could have some fun stuff in episodes to come. So stay tuned. Right, Chris? Of course. But of course. And with that, we'll say thanks so much for stopping by. <laughs>